So we're here at the National Plowing Championships and we're currently outside the Agriland tent talking to James Gaffey, a researcher at IT Tralee, who's going to just tell us a little bit about bioeconomy and some of the research he's doing in Tralee at the minute. Okay, so bioeconomy is the production of renewable biological resources, so all types of raw materials from the agriculture, forestry, marine sectors, and their conversion into useful products, so things like chemicals, proteins, energy, uh, fine chemicals, all types of high value materials. Um, and that, we're doing some work then within uh, IT Tralee alongside University College Dublin and the Carberry Group on a project called Biorefinery Glass. Uh, so biorefinery is something similar to how farmers might imagine anaerobic digestion. So in an anaerobic digester you take in slurries, you take in uh, grass and you produce an energy from it, a biogas and you produce a digested. In a biorefinery we're looking at slightly more advanced systems. So we're looking at extracting all kinds of high value materials. Energy is quite a low value material so we're looking at the extraction of protein for example, uh, bio-based bio chemicals, plastics uh, from uh, renewable materials like grass, like straw, like wood and, they're, uh, and, and trying to add a lot more value than can ultimately be achieved in bioenergy systems. And then a biorefinery machine, like I'm just trying to paint a picture in my head what that kind of would look like on a farm and what kind of process would go from grass into a renewable product. Okay, so um, biorefineries vary in size. You can have very large scale biorefinery systems that are almost like petrochemical facilities producing biofuels and so on. Uh, we're now looking at trying to uh, produce on much smaller scales so that we can keep biorefineries on farms so that farmers can produce their own products from biomass. So within our grass biorefinery project, we take in fresh grass in the morning, we separate it into uh, two fractions, a, a, protein, a fiber fraction which contains about 60% of the protein, but the protein that's in the fiber fraction is used at a higher nitrogen efficiency than uh, the overall protein in grass. So we're optimizing the use of protein. We separate a juice fraction from which we can extract a lot of different materials, a protein which can be used by monogastrics who wouldn't be otherwise able to access protein in grass. Uh, high value sugar stream and the residues then can be used as a biofertilizer or for the production of biogas. So could this potentially be another income for a farmer on his farm? I think absolutely because at the moment a farmer is simply feeding the grass to the cow so that's one product. If we use a biorefinery approach we can produce four different co-products. The farmer can still produce uh, uh, still feed the cow with the fibre fraction but he can produce two, three different uh, co-product streams which can be going to different markets. So markets like the monogastric feed market, the uh, animal nutrition market, the cosmetic markets from some of the different products that we're producing. A lot of these are uh, big markets but also high value markets. And could this potentially reduce our emissions or reduce our environmental impact on farms or does it would it have any effect on that? Yeah, there's a big opportunity to reduce emissions. For example, if we can improve the overall nitrogen use efficiency of the protein, of the protein in the fibre that the cow is fed, uh, we have lower nitrogen going in, we can achieve lower nitrogen on the other end of the cow as well. The nitrogen is better utilised. And another way which we can improve the environmental efficiency on the farms and for Ireland as a country is through a reduction of soybean imports. Uh, so if we can replace a lot of about 3 million tonnes of animal feed is imported annually, a lot of that comes from South America, if we can displace that with an indigenous homegrown animal feed for monogastrics, we can displace a lot of emissions there as well and we can still produce biogas from the residues. And you're, there's currently some studies on our go, our ongoing at IT Tralee. Would you maybe just give us a bit of an introduction to that? Yeah. So, so uh, the work we're doing at the moment is with the Carberry Group. So uh, we've been demonstrating a small-scale biorefinery on five farms in West Cork over the summer, producing enough volumes of the four different products from our grass biorefinery so that we can carry out scaled-up feed trials. Uh, UCD are carrying out some cattle feed trials uh, through the Barry Row Cooperative in West Cork. They're a pig feed supplier, so they're going to evaluate the potential uh, use of the protein 
protein core product as a, a, a feeding product uh, uh, to substitute uh, soybean in pig feed diets. In it Lee, we're evaluating the extraction uh, and, and prebiotic efficacy of fructooligosaccharides, a high-value sugar stream contained in grass, and then we're also looking at the production and evaluating the residues for the production of biogas. Thanks very much, James. We're just going to move on to your college, Bridget Lynch now, who's a lecturer in UCD, who's maybe going to tell us how biorefinery can work into a farmer system and maybe some of the products that can be developed from biorefinery. Yeah, so I guess the biorefinery of grass, you know, 80, 90% of our grassland, of our agriculture land area is grassland. So farmers are all operating a core enterprise or enterprises at the minute where they're in dairy production or beef or sheep or combination of those on their grassland area. So all or a lot of farms are faced with the challenge of farm fragmentation um, in their grassland area. So uh, potentially they can have their core enterprise on the home block that's around the farmyard. Um, Biorefinery Gloss um, has the potential to give added value to an outside block of land that's maybe a couple of kilometres down the road where previously they maybe managed it in a pretty extensive way, maybe grazing it um, extensively or taking a cut or two of silage off it during the year. Um, so if they can potentially use that block of land um, and get a premium from it um, through the, um, a number of the co-products that they produce and then in addition they can use the fibre fraction, um, that's one of the products, um, end products of biorefinery. Use that as a forage source, it's in silt, in bales or in a silage pit if it's large scale. Um, feed that back to their livestock and so it can be a winter um, farm source. But also the biofertiliser that's um, produced as well at the end of the biorefinery, that can be applied back onto the land in which they've harvested the grass for biorefinery. And has there been any studies maybe done on the, these byproducts? I'll get that question off the um, Has there any studies been done maybe on like in terms of the animal performance from these biorefinery byproducts being fed to animals? Like is there a better performance from the animals or off the fertilizer maybe? Mm -hmm. um, so there has been studies done with the fodder source which is called press cake um, in Aarhus University in Denmark and also in the Louis Bock Institute in the Netherlands and in those trials they have fed it to dairy cows, so milk and dairy cows and they have found that it has maintained milk production in one study and in another study it actually increased milk solids production. Um, so it has great potential there to you know maintain or increase production um, and not have a penalty for the farmer if they use that forage source when they feed it back to livestock. Um, another really interesting outcome was that they reduce nitrogen and phosphorus excretion from the dairy cows that were consuming um, the press cake by 25% in one of the studies. So that's as a result of reduce nitrogen and phosphorus intake because the, the levels are lower in the press cake. But you know, increasing or maintaining production and getting a significant reduction in nitrogen phosphorus excretion um, you know, ticks a lot of boxes for farm sustainability at the minute. And sustainability is a hot topic at the minute, so I think something like this would definitely have a very good impact on the on the sector mm. as a whole yeah. going forward. Thank you very much, Bridget. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.